Hope the knee is better. Have you had any luck with the start capacitor motor startup on your large lathe running on the inverter? Cheers. Okay. Um, I haven't been messing with the big lathe uh, lately because I, I do want to use a bigger inverter for it, which is sitting in a box back here. I haven't put it in the workshop. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build, you know, my real workshop and set everything up there and get it all working over there because you know i could spend a bunch of time in putting this inverter over here and then getting everything working and then i'm just going to drag it to the other workshop and then set it all up and i'm probably not going to use it in that meantime so i am very much looking forward to getting it running and just tuning everything up and getting it amazing but i'm not going to do that until i can uh you know actually devote the time to it and really pay attention to it and do an amazing job so i'm going to make a new workshop with a bigger inverter and just get everything everything super awesome awesome in that workshop okay yeah some happy message happy message okay how's my family doing i think i kind of covered that already in some of the answers but my family is doing great really good really awesome oh it's so it's so great to see my kids growing up without being crushed. Like when I was a kid, I just felt like everything was just trying to crush me all the time. And I was always fighting back and I was just angry. Like my kids are so relaxed and curious and they, they're they so motivated to, to do so much stuff. It's, it's awesome. Okay. Uh, are you still in touch with the lady in Alaska you helped build a cabin with? Um, I haven't spoken to her in a little while actually, but yeah, we, we talk once in a while. This is... Uh, I built a log cabin in Alaska, I don't know, years ago, and it's it's on YouTube. A cabin update. I don't have a cabin update. I guess I could ask her how it's going, but last I heard, which was maybe, I don't know, sometime within the last year or two, uh, it, the cabin was still there, and she said she'd been there recently, and it was great, so that's good. Okay, next we have a question about my daughter's dating in the future, and it's kind of not worded the best. But I mean, I'm just going to say something about daughters and fathers in general. So I, I see a lot of women and young ladies who are simply behaving atrociously and dating just horrible, horrible guys, like just choosing players and just jerks and just and then not understanding why no one sticks around and then just thinking all guys or players are jerks when the, when it's only like a small percentage of people. And my question, whenever I see this happening, is where the hell are the dads? Where are the dads in this situation? Now, the answer is society has sidelined dads. Dads aren't allowed to do anything or get involved because they're just oppressing and being mean. It's just one of the reasons I, I wanted to get out of that society. Um, with my daughters, anyone they're dating is going to have to go through me. I'm going to have to like them because I'm going to have a much better idea of what they should be looking for than they are. When they're 16, 18, 20 years old, they're not going to understand what they should be looking for long term in a, in a partner. I will have a much better idea of this. And this is why traditionally, you know, in the past guys had to impress the father to get to the daughter and i think it should be that way so yeah any anyone who dates my girls is gonna have to go through me will i be doing any more philosophical videos yeah I, you know whenever i get get the inspiration to do it i don't like to just make them on like a set schedule because if i don't if i don't have something well thought out that i i want to express i don't like to force it because then I'll end up barfing out something that doesn't make sense or is like a half-baked idea. Um, hopefully, there's some philosophy coming out in these answers right now. Okay, this is a 3D printer question. Like, how useful have I found a 3D printer to be? Oh, my 3D printer is currently on the fritz, and it's been for a while, and I just haven't fixed it. But I guess because I don't find it super useful. Like, it's really nice to be able to draw something in the computer and then print it out, but it's not that strong. Um, 
like I can make much stronger things just going to the workshop and milling something or melting something or casting or there's there are so many other options that make more durable items okay for example you know I made um, gears for uh, pedal power for for a boat and the gears I could have 3d printed those really easily and made just really nice gears but I guarantee they wouldn't have withstood me pushing it on, on them with my with my leg power so I took some sheet metal and some steel pipes stainless stuff and used a grinder and some you know just did some some MacGyvery junk and the gears didn't come out perfect they're a little bit noisy but I can push on those things pretty much full force and the, the gears don't slip they don't break or anything I wouldn't be able to do that with a 3d printer what is your definition of quality I think something is missing in that question I think there's two basic definitions of quality the qual a quality of something is like a characteristic of that thing or you can talk about like the quality level of something like how good it is right, what's the next question what happened to the court nozzle experiment and the sailboat mast I think I talked about the sailboat mast already okay the court nozzle thing I do kind of want to put a nozzle I do want, I want to do some experiments with nozzling some propellers I uh, I don't have time right now I mean it's there's a lot of things that I want to do and I'm just going through them one at a time you know so hopefully I will get to that at some point it would be really nice to put a, a nozzle on the zombie chopper for two reasons one hopefully it'll make the propeller more efficient and two it'll make it so I don't have to worry so much about hitting the propeller on the on the bottom when I'm you know pulling the boat in and out or if I'm going through a shallow area do you watch many movies do you even have the time if so what are some good ones that you've enjoyed recently hmm. uh, I wouldn't say I watch a lot of movies okay Friday no Saturday and Sunday we have movie night here you know with the kids and just the whole family watches and lately I guess for like a couple months mostly we've been watching Star Star Trek the next generation so we'll just watch an episode Saturday and an episode Sunday and then in the evenings you know after the kids go to sleep and everything I usually do like 20 or 30 minutes of stretching and I'll often put a movie on during that because you know it's kind of boring just stretching so I'll watch like a quarter of a movie every night so I'll watch a movie like over a week or I guess recently I watched Firefly you know the whole the whole series and then serenity the the movie ah i it's not the first time i've seen it it's a great great show love that show hmm i guess i i guess i feel like those characters are kind of kindred spirits a little bit what do you do for fresh drinking water what do you do with your trash and how is the compa composting toilet working thanks okay drinking water we just drink the rain uh the houseboat i'm in right now collects water off the solar panels goes down a, a gutter into a water tank back there and we just drink it not filtered or anything <clears throat> what do you do with your trash well mostly we try not to get garbage which is difficult because everything comes with packaging um, but I mean even started before I moved down here I, I would like go to the grocery store and buy stuff and leave the boxes with them <laughs> Um, but the garbage I do have, I try to find uses for it after, you know, after it's, it's done its initial use. So any kind of bottles, like plastic bottles, I stuff inside boats. Like I have compartments that are just flotation compartments where you don't put anything in there. They're not for storage or anything. I, and I stuff, uh, bottles in there and I, I have lots of space that I can stuff that kind of stuff in um, but yeah I, I try to I try to just try to limit the amount of garbage I have and then find uses for it and it's it's not a perfect system there, there are things where I end up with this garbage that I just can't find a use for and then it kind of hangs around and I'm, I'm 
I think I want to start melting some plastic down because that's that's really the thing like paper anything like that you know I just use it to start fires it's, it's plastic is the problem so I want to start melting plastic down and like casting it into things or turning it into blocks that I can mill into different parts but yeah there is there is some amount of garbage that I'm just not doing anything with right now just kind of collecting it. how many total watts between pedals and motor, are you putting to the water in your new boat to achieve nine miles per hour? Also, what was the total boat weight with you in it during testing? Oh, I don't know what the total boat weight with me. Okay, the total power, let's see, the motor is, I think like almost 800 watts. And then I was probably putting maybe another 200 watts of power into there. So when I when I was going nine miles per hour, that was with the old gear setup, and I couldn't push as hard as I wanted without slipping or without yeah without slipping a gear. Now I have it set up where I can pedal pretty much as hard as I want and it doesn't slip. So I I can probably go a little bit faster, but yeah, probably around a thousand watts to get nine miles per hour, roughly maybe a little bit less. And I could still definitely tweak the propellers to get them more efficient. But you know, they're efficient enough that it's definitely usable. So I've just been using it because most of the stuff I make, I'm not trying to max it out as much as I'm trying to get it to a point where it's usable and then, then, then I can use it. And then when I have time, you know, I increase the efficiency on things when I can. All right, next question is roughly like, what's my backstory and how do I deal with a high stress environment and you know dangers from wildlife and stuff okay the second part I can answer easily I don't find this place to be a high stress environment at all I find it to be pretty chill actually I find cities to be high stress because there's so many rules you, you can't you can't do anything without a permit except you know what you're as long as you're just walking down the sidewalks following the signs not trying to build anything or do anything interesting you're fine but as soon as you start being creative and imaginative in a city, you just start getting in trouble and uh, the cops start visiting you. Right. I feel much more comfortable here. Um, in terms of wildlife, generally wild animals don't want to fight with things because they have a survival instinct and getting in unnecessary fights threatens their survival. So wild animals don't want to fight me and I don't want to fight them. So if I'm like out in the jungle or something, I make sure I make a lot of noise, you know, talk, stomp around, make sure I don't sneak up on anything where, you know, where something's going to suddenly feel cornered and like it needs to defend itself. Um, and I, I haven't had any problems on the little island here. There's no, there aren't any scorpions or snakes or anything like that. Uh, they're just, there just wasn't anything there when we got here. Uh, some of my other properties, like the big jungly ones, there's, you know, there's a bit of dangerous stuff, but nothing that would like come after you to kill you and try to eat you or anything. Okay, but swimming in the ocean, there's always a chance that some stray shark is just gonna come eat you. And you know, it happens occasionally, like very rarely though. And there aren't, there aren't many sharks around here or anything like that. Uh, probably the most dangerous thing are jellyfish. But if I look in the water and I see jellyfish, I just don't go in the water. It's very rare that there's any, that there are any uh, dangerous jellyfish here though. And it's not like they're invisible. Like you, you can see them. Okay. The first part of this question is a little bigger. Uh, roughly, I grew up in the suburbs of Ontario, Canada. And I felt like I was surrounded by a culture of unhappy people pretending to be happy. You know, in a very, I mean, there's, there's obviously more to it, but that was just the rough idea I was getting. And I knew, like, from a very young age, I, I couldn't live like that. Um, I tried to kind of work within the system all the way up through university. And... You know, I was successful. I did sports and, you know, did well there and did well in school. I was just always frustrated, you know, with just the culture around me. So by the time I finished university, I was like, all right, I've had it with this. I'm not going down this path anymore. And I started saving money so I could try to 
buy my way out of the system basically you know buy some land go somewhere do do something different make some other lifestyle that that meshes with my own uh my own my own uh ideas of morality and virtue as opposed to just kind of being shoved around this cattle pen like i feel most people are and it is super super worth it like uh, like my life's basically started when i moved off grid everything before that was just i just felt like i was some cow being shoved around in the pens and anyone who's thinking about moving off grid and you, you know you're not happy with the way you know popular cult culture is don't let people tell you it's going to be scary and horrible just just prepare as best you can and go for it it's totally worth the effort but you have to keep in mind it's a lot of work and every when you when you take on all the responsibilities for yourself you know that means you you can't be lazy basically <laughs> i hope that covers a little bit of it what are your plans for your robots any projects for your 3d printer you have on the go uh, I don't, i'm not i haven't been 3d printing anything in a little while like i said my my 3d printers on the fritz right now i have to fix it at some point okay plans for my robots I'm not sure which robots like the robot toys or just like robots in general because ever since i was a little kid i've been making these robot walking things like all kinds of different ones i do want to build a new giant robot here after i build a workshop and uh i want to make it really awesome and probably out of fiberglass and waterproof amphibious and i have some designs in my mind and uh, I can't say that much about it because I, I have to work it out in my head first. But I have to get a bunch of other things done first, like, you know, building the workshop. This is kind of like where I started originally documenting things in Vermont, where I was like building a workshop so I could make a robot and blah, blah, blah. All right. Next question. Would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Why would, I don't know. Why would I fight? Oh, well. If you mean like fighting a horse-sized duck in terms of taming it, like, hey, you're my friend, and it's like, no, I'm not, and I'm like, yeah, you're my friend. You want me to, to get on you, and then we can fly around in the sky. That'll be great. And that could be considered a fight, I guess. But yeah, I, I would love to drive around on a horse-sized duck, presuming, I'm presuming it could fly up into the air carrying me, right? Then we could zoom around. Oh, that'd be amazing. I mean, nothing against duck-sized horses, but they would, that's not as interesting as flying around on a huge duck. Ah, can you do a current video tour of the island and the inside of your castle? Oops. Oh, well, I just kind of did that in the first question I answered. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to remember to do... A tour of everything kind of soonish like a dedicated video to that I have to clean up a little bit kids made a mess the kids make a mess a lot that's okay um oh and a couple questions ago one of the things was something about sustainability yeah i want not sustainability um self-sufficiency yeah i want to be totally self-sufficient here on the island within a few years i don't know it might be like five or ten years before i'm like totally self-sufficient and, you know, I'll go buy things, but I, I want to be here and not have to go anywhere to buy anything. 